Welcome back to another Component 2 screencast and this is the first of two short videos looking at sampling techniques in sociological research. Now in sociological research the group that we're researching is called our target population and it's usually not practical to do research on every single individual within the target population. Normally we won't have the time or the resources to be able to do that. So what we have to do when we carry out sociological research is to select a smaller group uh, from the research population. And this smaller uh, group is what we call our sample. In other words, a sample is simply a smaller part of the target population. Now ideally, samples should be as representative of the target population as possible. And this simply means that our sample should reflect the group as a whole. In other words, our smaller group, our sample, needs to be a good cross-section of the types of people that we would find within our target population. And if our sample is representative, then that's very useful because that means we can generalise the results from our smaller group to the wider population. Now because sociologists usually want to ensure that their sample is as representative of the target population as possible, um, they will normally use what we call random sampling. And in random sampling, each member of the population should have the same probability of being chosen. So random sampling techniques like these ones are sometimes also referred to as probability sampling. Now there might be occasions where that is simply not practical. And where it's not practical to take a random sample, sociologists will have to choose a non-random sampling technique although the samples used uh, with these techniques are unlikely to be representative. Now in this first screencast on sampling techniques we're going to focus on some of the main uh, examples of random sampling. So these are sampling techniques that try to ensure that every member of the target population has the same chance or probability of being included in your sample. Now for random sampling, the researcher uh, initially needs a list of everybody in the target population. And the technical term uh, for this list is a sampling frame. So for example, if we were doing research on schools and we were looking to get a random sample of uh, students, we could use registers as our sampling frame. And the technical term for every name that appears on your sampling frame is a sampling unit. Now the easiest way of trying to achieve a random sample is to use a technique called simple random sampling. And as you can see from this image what we do with this technique is we assign a number to every individual on our sampling frame and then we simply randomly generate a series of numbers in order to get our sample. And if we're taking a reasonably large sample uh, using this particular technique, then the laws of probability should ensure that the characteristics of the sample uh, reflect those of the target population. However, if the researcher is not using a reasonably large sample, then the researcher can't be completely confident that simple random samples will be genuinely representative. Uh, another problem with this technique, and indeed all of the um, techniques that we call random sampling, is you need to complete an up-to-date uh, sampling frame, and this might not be available. A less time-consuming way of trying to obtain uh, a random sample using a sampling frame would be to use a technique called systematic sampling. And in this particular case, uh, you number the participants in your sampling frame and then you pick participants at a set interval. So for example, we can see here that I've numbered everybody 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 and so on. And I could simply uh, get a sample of a third of these respondents by selecting everybody that I've given a number 1 to. 
Another more sophisticated way of trying to get a random sample is a technique called stratified sampling. And in this particular technique, we divide our sampling frame into groups, what we call strata, in order to ensure that the sample is as representative as possible. For example, if the researcher has identified gender as an important variable that they want to study, they would take their population and they would divide it up into two lists, one list of uh, males and another list of females. And if, for example, uh, you had a group of 12 people, and let's say six of them were male, six of them were female, and you wanted an overall sample of four uh, people, you would simply select uh, two people at random from the six men on your list, and then two people at random from the six women uh, on your list. And as a deliberate effort is made to make the sample representative of the target population, this method may be more useful than simple random sampling if the sample you are taking is relatively small. However, it is a technique that can be very time consuming, particularly if you're dealing with uh, a number of subcategories that have to be identified and the proportions calculated.